or to my computer. Okay, if you could offer that and then we'll dive in. Our Heavenly Father, we're so grateful to meet in this capacity in the church educational system of thy kingdom upon the earth. We humbly pray for thy spirit to attend this group. And Brother Beasley, as he teaches and as we hear, may we hear through the Holy Ghost that we can take these things here to share with the young people that they may know Jesus Christ, who thou hast sent, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 You have to put God in. I know. Can I, I just want to say that very much so what Brother King Cage just said is my prayer that we all ourselves can come to know Christ better and learn how to better help our students through the power of the Holy Ghost. And so to that end, I'll go ahead and share my screen. The topic today, as I think most of us are aware, is this. Focus on converting principles of the gospel and teach them in ways that build faith in Jesus Christ. Can you just give me a thumbs up if you can see that all right? Okay, great. So many of you are probably aware that we now have a new teaching in the Savior's Way manual that is for pretty much all teachers in the church, whether you're a parent, a seminary teacher, a Sunday school, young woman, young man's, whatever teacher, we have a brand new um, kind of adapted from the old teaching the Savior's way. And this is now our handbook also in seminaries and institutes. No longer are we separate. And in that handbook, it states this. Brother Kincaid, can you read that first paragraph? God's commandments are about more than just our outward behavior. They are meant to help us change our hearts and become more fully converted. Okay. Before I move to the next paragraph that will discuss a little bit more than what we need to do, I'm gonna ask you, Brother Kincaid, and anyone else that would like to, what stands out to you in that short little portion of that paragraph? Well, we think about our outward behavior a lot on a daily basis. Um, I think it's the change our hearts. You know, you, you can change your look on the outside, which doesn't amount to much. And our culture focuses on the outside, but the savior can change hearts. And uh, that whole process is the process of full conversion. Thank you so much. Would anyone like to react to what Brother Kincaid has said there? I just, uh, to put it in a kid's um, understanding, I think it's more, this tells me it's more important to walk the walk, not just talk the talk. And when they come in, they, they are all day long in school and everywhere they hear talk the talk. But when they see us, being Christ-like to them and sharing what, um, what it's like to, um, to have the spirit inside, not just us tell them what it's like, but them to see it through us and through each other, through this seminary class. And so Sister Word, what does that require then? That requires more work on our end than on there. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely we gotta we have to seek to live it and and yes. Yes. maybe the most important thing is is to repent every day like our prophet says so that christ can change us as brother king k pointed out i love it anyone else want to respond to that please sister marshall well uh i was thinking of uh, when david was uh called by the prophet it, it was said that the uh the lord looks on the heart not upon the stature and the outward appearances of anyone so i think we need to remember that it's our heart there where we are converted and not in our any of our outward lines and we need to get that information to those children 
those learners that we have so that they can feel that and understand that it's in the heart where everything matters. I also think there's a responsibility on the part of the learner um, to accept, to listen, to accept and ponder. Sometimes they just come to seminary and want to sleep. And if I might just add to, to that comment there, I would hope that all of us will, from the beginning of the year, reteach and continue to reteach throughout the year principles of the role of the learner, that they must exercise agency to act in the learning process in order to invite and permit and allow the Holy Ghost to come into their heart so that Christ can change them. Does that make sense? Fabulous yes. comment. Okay, well, let's, let's look at the second part portion of this. Since we're about change, we're not just about knowledge of the mind, that unless it, unless it goes into the heart and the Holy Ghost bears witness of it and we act upon it, uh, there's not going to be much change in becoming, which is our goal. And so our handbook states, carefully consider the doctrine and principles you decide to focus on. While there are many truths in the scriptures that can be discussed, it is best to focus on truths of the gospel that lead to conversion and build faith in Jesus Christ. So there are many doctrines and principles we could pull out and maybe are exciting to us, but there's some that are much more important and carry greater converting power and power to lead us to Christ and increase our faith than others. So what are those would be the question. And I would like, I would like everyone just to ponder for 30 seconds to a minute. I'm just going to be quiet. I want you to think about what are some truths of the gospel that have helped you become more converted and have greater faith in Jesus Christ. And I would ask you when you have thought of one, please write it in the chat. And hopefully we'll just get a running list of some of those truths that are more lead to conversion and faith in Christ. I'm going to stop sharing the screen for a moment. But again, what are some of the truths or a truth of the gospel that's helped you become more converted to Christ and have greater faith in him? Go. I'm just going to begin to read some of these as, as others are finishing putting them in. Brother Kincaid, trials humble. Then we must reach out for the mercy and grace of the Savior. Love it. So I see the idea of trials and their role in humbling us. And then the idea of the mercy and grace of the Savior. Thank you very much. Sister Stevens, that I am a daughter of a heavenly father and families can be together forever. Sister Stevens, can I have you come off mute and just share how that knowledge that you are a daughter of heavenly father has helped you become more converted and exercise more faith? Well, I'm a convert to the church, but it's been over 50 years <laughs> since I 
was baptized and being together as a family forever was one of the main points that caused my conversion. And um, then along the way, knowing that I am a daughter of a heavenly father has helped me. Uh, just on a personal note, I, I suffer from depression. And um, sometimes just having that knowledge has gotten me through some of the dark times in my life. Thank you very much, Sister Stevens. Moving along then, Sister Johnston Taylor, that my faith precedes the miracle. For example, the woman who touched the garment of the Savior or the widow who fell to Elijah. Sister Isaac's in opposition in all things. Trials can bring me to the Savior and his atonement. Love it. Sister Cyber, our Heavenly Father has a plan for me, and it is the path that will allow me to live with him again. Sister Paige, peace that surpasses all understanding comes only from spending time in the scriptures, not Netflixing for two hours. <laughs> that is for sure. Although we've all been there. Sister uh, Word, humility is important to my having faith. Okay, wonderful truths. And I believe that these are the types of truths that will allow the Holy Ghost to more fully convert us and bring us to the Savior, increase our faith in him. Now, having said that, I'd like us to take a look. These are all verses that are in this section in our teaching in the Savior's way. Manual, there's a few others, but I've chosen these four. What I would like to do is I'm going to number you one through four. I'd like, I'd like to ask you to go to the verse that's related to your number. I'll explain that in a second and read it and look for what truths in those verses are we taught that we should teach. I would suggest to you these are some of those truths or principles or doctrines that are more likely to lead us to have faith in Christ and become converted. Now, some of these are a lot longer. So once you've read your verse, please feel free to go to some of these other verses and tell the time is up. So Sister Therrington, if you'd be number one, number one, we'll look at 2 Nephi 25, 26. Sister Heidi Johnson, number two, which would be DNC 19. And Sister Isaacson, 3 Nephi 11. Brother Kincaid, Moses 6. Sister Page, back to 2 Nephi. Sister Word, DNC 19. Sister Cyber, 3 Nephi. Sister Hansen, Moses 6. Again, you're reading your verses and others, depending on the time, looking for what are we taught that we should teach? What are some of these more important converting truths of the gospel? And if I missed anyone, just go to whatever verses you want. <laughs>
once you have read one or more verses and identified one or more truths, please just give me a, a thumbs up so I can see where we're at. Okay, thank you. I'll give you another 30 seconds. And then I'm going to put you in breakout rooms just so more have an opportunity to share what you saw there. We won't put you in those rooms for long. What are some of the essential truths that you found? Okay, so Sister Heidi Johnston, would you lead out in your group when I put you in breakout groups and just give everyone a chance to share? Thank you. And Brother Kincaid, can you lead out in your group? Awesome. And last off, let's see, Sister, I'm trying to see here if I can even see you. Sister Marshall, are you there? How about, I'm actually just gonna move some of you into some of these other rooms. Okay, so just those two rooms. So in your room, would you just take just a moment of peace and, uh, and just briefly share the verses you looked at and one or more truths that you see there that are essential to teach. Sister Martin, did you have a question or a comment? Okay, you're on mute, but it looked like you said no. So we'll move forward here. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh yes, go ahead, Sister Marshall. You're on mute too. Excuse me, you're it. on mute, go ahead. I got it. Where did my husband and I go? We were not given. We looked up, but we were not given. In just a moment, I'll open the rooms and you'll see an invite to go into a room. Okay. So right now, I just opened it. You should see an invite to choose to go into a room. No, hmm. I had second Nephi. <laughs> okay. So I didn't get any of them. Brother Beasley, is this not the the are we all discussing different verses? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought yeah. I thought that you were gonna put us all in the same one, but perfect. We can do it this way. So do you still want me to lead this one? Yeah, or please do you, do. I'm gonna bounce fear? back and we forth. Can, yes. Okay. All right. So the question was um looking at the verses that that we were each assigned what are the converting truths that we are um, encouraged to focus on in our verses so does anyone have anything they want to share about what they found in their verses i don't mind going first okay my name's sister hansen and i, I know i wasn't here for the beginning of the class but i teach in lake city florida and i had moses 6 57 through 62 it teaches about the plan of salvation there and the main thing that I think I got from that is just that repentance and ultimate salvation come from Jesus Christ. It was a chunky bit of information, but that to me is a huge converting truth. And that's what I pulled out of it. And probably what I would teach when teaching this or what I actually did teach when I taught those sections. <laughs> Thank you. That's, I think that's, that's excellent. And uh, I think how many, what I noticed when, when you mentioned that, I had Doctrine and Covenants 19, and it was very much the same thing. It was um, repentance, faith, remission of sins by baptism, and the, and the gift of the Holy Ghost. And how many, how many of the rest of you did your verses focus on very basic and foundational um, principles of the gospel? Sister, what, what, is, what was yours? Mine was the same as yours. Yeah. And no and understand specifically um, through the Holy Ghost that we can understand that. 
And so here's the challenge, right? The challenge is, you know, you can't package that and give it to the students at this young age. So what's gonna be the trigger for these young people? Sister Stevens, would you like well, to share? I was, I was doing second Nephi 25, 26. And we, we, look where it says we talk of Christ, we rejoice in Christ, we preach of Christ, we prophesy of Christ, and we write of Christ. And then it tells us why we do all this. And I've kind of changed that to be that our students may know to what source they may look for remission of their sins. Amen. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah, that's crucial, isn't it? So I, brother, sister, cyber, I'm not sure if you can um, communicate maybe through uh, the chat. I had Moses six, and do you know how the Pearl of Great Price gets? It gets really specific and it doesn't hold back on the doctrine because it's so unadulterated, like the Book of Mormon is, right? I'm folding the clothes. As I'm doing this, how should Christ be a part of every part of my life? And then, obviously, repentance should be also daily. And then I was going to bring in another general conference talk where it was so beautiful. I was just studying it. Is the plan working from other Ocha? And in his footnotes, this was the most beautiful quote in his footnotes. He says, from Elder Robbins, repentance isn't God's backup plan. It is the whole plan. And that's uh, what I think I, is such the beautiful part of our prophet. He's been telling us that repentance is a daily process, moment by moment. It's a change of breath, even a simple change of breath. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, I can do it. That's it's bringing in Christ right there, bringing in Christ right back into your life again. Wonderful. That's what we need to do. Yeah, I think that's a that's a great point. That's a great point. Yeah, we I remember I was teaching the kids and we were teaching about repentance, that the sign language for repentance is like, is I think ours going this way. And it's like, just turn around. You know, this is just repentance is the act of just turning around, just changing your direction. And, um, you know, and, and making a new choice. So thanks. I think that's those are the Okay, can you hear me? Wonderful, looks like we may have lost one or two coming back. They got lost in cyberspace there. Oh no, here they are, good. Okay, thank you very much. And as I jumped back and forth, I heard what seemed to me to be productive discussions going on. I would like to ask this question and discuss it for a moment before we move forward. And that is, I would like to ask, actually, I'm going to call on, if I could, Sister Heidi Johnston, or Sister, yeah, Johnston Taylor, and Brother Kincaid. You could either call on someone else to share, or you can share yourselves, but could you just share what you experienced in your group? Not necessarily what was shared, but what did you, as you listened, and as you discussed, what did you experience in that group? What, what stood out to you? We'll start with Sister Johnston Taylor. Again, you can share or ask someone else to. Um, I would for from my from my perspective, I thought we had a really nice discussion. It was it was brief, but it was focused. Um, we were we found that we all had different scriptures that we that we each read, but we were able to find the commonality and the um, the the foundation of of these foundational principles of the gospel and then uh sister page especially um expanded on that with bringing in um the words of of modern day prophets and if sister page would like to talk about what your experience was i would invite you to do that too <laughs> 
She says no. And no, so okay. <laughs> again, I don't mean to put you on the spot. Hopefully this doesn't, but Sister Johnston Taylor, what were some of the key converting doctrines that came out of your discussion that, that if we teach and teach frequently, it will provide the opportunity for the Holy Ghost to convert and lead our students to Christ? The key, well, we, we started off talking about the, again, the foundational principles first, the first off was repentance, um, and faith and, um, the, the necessity of, of repentance every day. And then, um, and sister pages taught, uh, verse was on, we preach of Christ. We, I should have that memorized, but I'm going blank now. Cause I've had, you know, performance I put anxiety. You on the spot. Exactly. <laughs> um, but the the idea that it is a daily and and an all consuming that that Christ and that that the principles the foundational principles of the gospel are not just a a we practice them in certain times or places but that we that we incorporate them into everything that we do um which actually it's funny because reminded me and I didn't get a chance to say it in the beginning of our discussion or even in the breakout but but the very first quote to me was more a matter of and, and everything about this discussion drives home the idea that that the gospel is not about doing things, but it's really about becoming something. It's not about like our daily task list and, oh, okay, these are the things, if I do all of these things every day, then that means I'm good with God, or that means I, I am converted. But it's, it's in the doing that we actually become, and that that's the, that's the important thing. It's not the doing, it's the becoming. Well said. And if I might point out again, and those of you that have become familiar with the teaching the Savior's way, our latest edition that Elder Uchtdorf just presented to the church, the first full section, there's three parts. The first full part underscores what you said, Sister Johnston Taylor, how we must tie everything back into Christ. Every principle we teach, we need to help our students connect it to Christ and see how Christ exemplified it, et cetera. He is our focus. And uh, so that the spirit can change us as we act upon those things and, and become. Okay, Brother Kincaid, what would you add to that? I'm assuming some of these same things came up in your group. What would you add as far as your experience and what you learned together? You're still on mute. So, you know, the center word for entrance, and with all due respect, it's not just the Savior, it is the Godhead, right, that we focus on, because without the Father or the Spirit, there is no coming unto Christ. Uh, but the, the word is repentance. In, in Moses 6, he just lays out the plan and he says, look, you're a fallen man or woman. Don't worry about it. That was the plan. But I've made way through the Savior that you can be born again. And I know when I was young, sitting in seminary class, and I heard repentance, that was the last thing I wanted to hear. Because repentance mean, mean, meant to me I had to talk to parents, to the bishop. I don't know what for, but it was confession. And who wants to do that when you're 16? But growing older through it, and as it's put uh, to Adam and to Enoch in Moses 6, the whole reason for this repentance action word, the ordinance is, with all due respect, simply an ordinance. It, it, it can be done, but that's the water. There must be baptism by the Spirit, and that's the key that changes hearts. And the peaceable things, the truth of all things, that which quickeneth all things, and therein comes the chain, change. So um, that is a lot to teach to young people, and I can't do that. No way. So I pray, and my wife and I pray, that we can find ways to share this about this change. And that is a big challenge, but, you know, we're not there alone doing this work, so. 
and implied, I think, Brother Kincaid, in your comments are that, that God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, all three are there to help and assist. And we do our very best to qualify for the companionship of the Holy Ghost. We do our very best to prepare and focus on those doctrines that are most essential that you all have just described, like faith in our Savior, Jesus Christ, repentance, baptism, or the sacrament, and all that's involved there, and ultimately this Holy Ghost and the Savior, focusing on the Savior. Those are the types of truths that will provide an opportunity for the Holy Ghost, especially as our students act in thinking, pondering, reading, writing, questioning, et cetera, and ultimately go forward and act upon some of these things. Then God, through the Holy Ghost and other means, will be able to change them. Anyone else want to comment on this before we move forward? Please. I do. Yes. Uh, Elder Renlin, I read a talk that he uh, gave. He said that... There are only four things we need to remember. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, repentance, baptism, or the sacrament, and receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. And it's a spiral staircase, and we do that all the time. And that's what enduring to the end is, just doing the same things over and over and over again until we're sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Thank you. Oh, so apropos, and, and doesn't he say it's not just holding on, enduring isn't just holding on, but it's yeah. doing that. Those doing the same thing, right. Cycle. Yes, that repentance, faith in Jesus Christ, repentance, sacrament, that active, focused, striving. Love it. Thank you. Sister Word, did you have your hand also? Did you want to say something? Oh, okay. Anyone else? Okay. Then let me share my screen again. And thank you very much for your participation to this, to this point. So we've looked at these verses. This is what it says going back to our new handbook, our new manual. And this, I believe, summarizes what you have all just taught. The simple, basic truths the Savior taught and exemplified have the greatest power to change our lives. Truths about his atonement, the plan of salvation, the commandments to love God and love our neighbor, and so on. So. The next question we might ask ourselves is, how do we teach these truths in ways that build faith in Jesus Christ? I want to share just a few ideas, and they're not new. They're not new in any way, but they're just reminders of things we can do, simple, common things we can do to invite the Holy Ghost into the process so that faith is increased in our students as we teach these things and conversion occurs. Afterwards, I'd love to hear any additional comments and then we'll, we'll, we'll tie up. So again, in our handbook, it states, invite the spirit to bear witness of these truths, helping them go deep into the hearts of those you teach. Well, how do we do that? I think we could all teach this. Testimony is one powerful way to invite the Holy Ghost to witness of truths. We can share our testimony, but maybe even more important, inviting students to testify of truths. And we can draw upon others' testimonies in the scriptures and words of modern prophets, seers, and revelators, and that sort of thing. Very similarly and very tied into testimony, and sometimes they're one and the same as experiences. Inviting our students to ponder on experiences they've had related to the truths we're teaching that show them that these are true can invite the Holy Ghost to witness powerfully to them and touch their hearts. As well as ourselves, we can share experiences. And again, experiences of others is found especially in the scriptures and words of, of our prophets and other leaders. Last off, we've kind of touched on this, but invitations to act both in the classroom, invitations to read and ponder and write, those kind of invitations to act will allow the Holy Ghost more fully if students will act upon them, will allow the Holy Ghost to touch and teach and change. And especially going forth 
out of the classroom, having maybe thought about and planned how they might apply what they're learning. As they then act, we know the Savior taught, if any man or woman will do his will, meaning the Father's, they shall know of the doctrine. So again, simple things that you probably already do, but ways that we can invite the Holy Ghost to witness. Then going back to our new handbook, this is the final idea I just want to emphasize. It states, recognize and emphasize that Jesus Christ is the perfect example of all gospel principles. As disciples, we don't just follow principles. We follow Jesus Christ. As we focus on the Savior's perfect example, the Holy Ghost will testify of him and inspire us to follow him. So again, recognizing and emphasizing that he is the perfect example. And here's one example or one model that our handbook gives us. They say, for example, imagine for a moment that you are teaching the principle of enduring to the end. And we're actually going to go look at a verse that teaches this. And, and actually, we'll discuss this a little bit. But you're teaching that principle, a discussion about how the Savior is an example of enduring to the end could bring feelings of sweet reverence for him. So I would like to actually do that. Let's, I'd like to go with you to first or second Nephi 31 20. And I'll pull it up here also in the gospel library. But if you have your own scriptures there, I'd encourage you also to go there. Oops, wrong book. Okay. So, who would be willing to come off mute and read to us again? This is, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is Nephi. And uh, he's nearing the end of his record. And he's just taught us about faith and repentance and baptism and the Holy Ghost. And then he caps it all off with, uh, with verse 20. And actually, let's read verses 19 and 20. Sister Isaacson, are you able to see that? And able to read that to us? Now, my beloved brethren, after you have gotten to the certain knowledge, I would ask you all of them. Behold, I say unto you, nay, for you have not come thus far, or by the word of Christ, with unfaithful faith, and sin, relying wholly upon the merits of him who is mighty. Wherefore, you must press forward with a steadfastness in Christ, having a perfect brightness of hope and love of God and of all men. Wherefore, if you shall press forward, feasting upon the word of Christ, and bear to the end, behold, thus say the Father, and you shall have. Okay, now there is a lot we could camp out on and discuss in this verse. But I just want to focus on the principle of enduring to the end, which Already, we've had a great thought. I forget who it was that shared Elder Renlund's words. Sister, yeah, I forget who it was. But, but, he, but what I'd like to discuss with you is this. We are told we need to endure to the end. And that includes exercising faith, repentance, baptism, partaking of the sacrament. That cycle continues on. But I'd love to discuss with you in closing how was our Savior, how did he exemplify the principle of enduring to the end? Please go ahead, Sister Johnson Taylor. The thing that pops out in my mind just, just came to me immediately is the fact that in the garden, he literally said to his father, you know, well, figuratively, I guess, I'd rather not do this, but it's not up to me. I'll, I'll do what you want me to do. And so to, to throughout his life and, and no matter what he faced, whether it was the temptations when he was um, fasting, whether it was, you know, whether it was welcoming, you know, the, the little children um, to come to him when he was tired, whatever it was, he exemplified what his father wanted him to do right up until the very, very end when um he knew what was laying ahead and personally given his own choice was not something he was 
wanting to do, but but in everything he he subverted his own will to the, the will of his father. Amen. I'm not going to comment much on that, although I loved it because I want to give others a chance to bounce off of that or add additional thoughts. Who else would like to respond to Sister Taylor's or add? Please, Brother Marshall. Well, I, I just couldn't help but think about the Savior knew the mission that he was on. And he knew that all of this was leading up to that. And it was still hard for him to go through that. And he even cried, you know, why hast thou forsaken me to his father? And I, I just, he made it. He did it. Even though it was difficult to do. And if we will rely upon our sake, uh, rely upon him, then we can make it because he's been there and he's experienced what we are experiencing. We just need to rely upon that with faith. Thank you, Brother Marshall. Anyone else? Go ahead, Sister Page. I just want to add one more that I think it was even before he completed the atonement in its entirety, even in his life, there were moments of endurance that he did. I mean, there were moments where his friends had deaths and he sat in that moment of endurance with them. He didn't have to. He could have raised Lazarus. He could have done all these miracles, but he chose to sit in those moments of endurance with them and he modeled it so perfectly. He didn't have to, but he did. And it was so beautiful. So up until that big moment of endurance, there were so many beautiful moments where he modeled it so perfectly for us up until that big momentous one that he had to do for us. And I love reading about those smaller moments. Thank you very much, Sister Martin. Uh, in John 19, it said, verse 28, and af after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, and then verse 30 said, it is finished. So he set out the plan, knew when it was over, and then gave up the ghost. So he did endure to the end. A perfect example. Yeah. How can this example and knowledge of our Savior's willingness to endure to the end, his love for the Father that helped him, his love for us, how can that help us as we are serving our youth and young adults in seminary and institute? For me, I have to <clears throat> I have to find some energy or connection with the Father and the Son, because enduring in this world is not a simple task. And it gets easier as, as I get older, but it has been a celestial task. And I must find connection. And when I say connection, I mean power that gives me the ability to endure through temptation, to endure through challenges and trials, and not just that piece, but to endure to be focused um, and to focus on the words of Christ on a daily basis and continue to evolve through this, these new things that I learn as I'm sanctified and, and I grow. And the one scripture that gives me that connection and power is 3 Nephi 27. And my father sent me that I might be lifted up upon the cross. And I had been lifted up upon the cross that I might draw all men unto me. For me, Christ can draw me to him as he's attached to the father. So that gives me a lot of strength because... 
I have been lifted up by men, even so should men be lifted up by the Father. So I see two power sources here, the Father and the Son, and they both want to lift me. Um, I can do all I can do as a mortal man, but that just simply doesn't work. But there is power here for me. And uh, in some way, these young people need to know they're not alone struggling in this sphere that is at times so challenging. I, I have a thing I wanted to share with that, too, in relating to the youth um, on this. Um, with I love what that sister quoted about, or was it you, Brother Beasley, about the um, Jesus Christ enduring to the end um, his friend's trial of a, someone dying and um, equating that to not just that Christ is our example, but we um, we can adopt that Christ-like behavior in school or with our friends or our parents if they're going through a hard time or you know someone sitting alone and going up to them, that's Christ-like behavior. So that they can equate it to themselves too, not just, um, not just something that they read about, but they are also enveloping um, the endurance to the end for themselves and for somebody else. Well said, the idea of relevance, which is so essential in our teaching. Sister Marshall? As I think we should never give up on our students. And as we learn and grow, buoy them up to keep going, stay the course. Absolutely. Okay, would you all do this? In closing, you've all taken the time on this Saturday to come forward. Now it's 1053, so almost an hour we've been together. You've sacrificed this time. I hope and pray that this time together, your agency you've used to come and participate has provided an opportunity for the Holy Ghost to teach you something you need for your own life, for your teaching. And with that in mind, would you be willing to write in the chat just one takeaway for you? Something that you have learned today that the Spirit's taught you that's not too personal, that you find beneficial. One thing you've learned today that you'll take away and hopefully will help you as a teacher or in your life. If you'd write that in the chat, I'll just be quiet for a little bit here and let you think and write. Sister Martin, you have your hand up, question or comment? <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't find, I'm not that familiar and I don't know where to write. <laughs> oh, you do not need to feel uncomfortable. So let's see, are you on a computer or a phone? I'm or... on my phone. Okay, just trying to think on the phone where to direct you. Anyone else on a phone that a real familiar? That's okay, I don't, I don't have to write anything. <laughs> We'll, we'll just let you express it verbally. <laughs> if you're if you're on a phone, there's three dots that say more on the right hand side bottom. If you don't right. see them, click the screen, just like press on your screen really quick and it'll pop up. Okay. And under the more section, you'll see chat, meeting settings, background, and you just go to the chat. Okay, thank you. You're welcome.
Thank you. Again, I'm gonna quickly read through these. Thank you very much. Sister Hansen says, we look to Jesus Christ for salvation and we need the entire Godhead for salvation. That sounds reminiscent of Brother Kincaid's comments too. Thank you, Roy, Brother Marshall. We need to keep growing and learning and becoming closer to Christ. Sister Johnston Taylor, focus on foundational truths consistently applied. Sister Page, while teaching, Focus on the gospel, not on the scripture side truths. Sister Isaac said, the Savior loved through the end. Forgive them for they know not. We have the chance to teach and touch those that know not. And if the Savior can love and serve through the end, so can I. Thank you very much, Sister Cyber. Focus on leading the students to connect to the Savior. Sister Page, also for my breakout group, my quote came from Elder Adrian Ochoa's talk, is the plan working? Okay, thank you for adding that, Sister Page. Sister Stevens, using the example of how Jesus endured to the end and aligned his will to the fathers can help me to have that desire also. Thank you. And lastly, Brother Kincaid, as a teacher in the kingdom, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit will support me in any way to teach and edify his children. Thank you for taking the time to say those things. I leave you with my witness and my gratitude for, for you being here and blessing in my life this morning. I feel edified being able to discuss these things with you and, and learning from you. I bear witness that Christ is who the scriptures and our living prophets say he is. He is our savior. He is our redeemer. He did perform his atonement. He is the center of the plan of our father in heaven, who is our father, and we are his children. And I know that as we seek to teach those foundational principles of this plan and of the atonement and, and the covenant path, those kind of principles, and as we invite our students to think about and act upon them, the spirit will be able to bring them more fully to the father and the son and change their hearts and give them what they need to return. And I leave that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I appreciate you very much. Sister Paige, can you offer a closing prayer? Our Father in heaven, we thank thee for the opportunity which we had to be able to meet together on this Saturday morning. We're grateful for the truths that we were able to learn and for the opportunity we had to be able to discuss thy gospel. We pray that thy spirit will be with us, that we'll be able to remember these truths as we go out and teach them, and pray that thy spirit will be with us the rest of this day. In the name of thy son, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. You have a wonderful rest of your Saturday and 4th of July weekend. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah.